Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, United States Naval Base in the Pacific Ocean. On Sunday, December the 7th, 1941, at dawn, strike units of carrier-based Japanese aircraft bombed the American Pacific Fleet lying at anchor. They sank or damaged 18 American ships. They put out of action more than 300 American planes. Today, it seems incredible that any single nation would pit itself against the United States. Why did Japan make this mistake? For centuries, Japan had been a small country cut off from the outside world. She resisted every Western attempt to colonize her. The people believe their emperor was descended from the gods. Behind the ceremony of court life, were the politicians and generals ruling in the name of the emperor. They believe that to survive in the modern world, Japan must catch up with the powerful industrialized nations of the West. By the 1920s, Emperor Hirohito rode at the head of a rapidly advancing nation. People generally thought politicians corrupt, but believed soldiers patriotic, straightforward and loyal. The army had already won lands abroad and ownership of the railway network in Manchuria. Japan's neighbour China had been under the thumb of the Western powers for years. And to protect their interests in China, they'd built strong military and naval bases in the Pacific area. America built a base at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Great Britain had bases at Hong Kong and Singapore. Why shouldn't Japan do the same? In 1922, Japan signed a naval treaty in Washington. The treaty meant the Japanese Navy could build three warships for every five British and five American. The admirals of the Japanese Navy came to resent this treaty, which they thought was unfair to Japan. World slump in the 30s hit Japan hard. The markets of the West were closing against Japanese goods. But Japan needed her exports to pay for her supplies. Each year there were more mouths to be fed. The Japanese people began to fear starvation. The voice of the army was heard in Japan. We are like a great crowd, it said, packed into a small and narrow room. We must have an empire in Asia as an outlet for our people's energies. Politicians closed their ears, but the masses listened to the army leaders. In September 1931, Japanese forces invaded Manchuria. Japan claimed that the Chinese had damaged the railway there, which belonged to Japan. China and America protested to the government in Tokyo, but it couldn't control the army. America said it wanted China's door to be open to the trade of all nations. Japan wanted China's door shut to all nations but herself. This was bound to lead to a collision with the West sooner or later. By March 1932, Manchuria was in Japanese hands. They called it Manchuko and set up a puppet emperor, the last of the Manchu family, Henry Puyi. At first, China could do little but appeal to the League of Nations. The League did little but protest to Japan. In 1936, communist and nationalist leaders in China said they were uniting to resist Japan. To meet this challenge, Japan decided to invade China. In July 1937, the Japan-China War began. It lasted for the next eight years. 
The invaders bombed the port of Shanghai and terrorized the Chinese. But reports of their savagery never reached Japan. At home, the Japanese were told only of splendid victories against hordes of Chinese bandits. By October 1938, the Japanese held most of the Chinese coastline. America cut her trade with Japan. Japan's generals reacted with contempt. Could an out-of-work country like America fight a hard-working country like Japan? America's jazz-crazy alcoholics hadn't a chance against Japan's fit peasants. America was the land of the gangster, they said. But in Japan, each soldier's life was the emperor's. The European dictators, on the other hand, were much admired in Japan and their fantastic success at the start of the Second World War. In June 1940, Japan launched the Greater East Asia Co-Prosperity Sphere. She meant to conquer all Southeast Asia and take by force all the war materials she needed. Japanese leaders had to admit they were now on a collision course with America. If it came to war, the two were bound to fight it out on the high seas. Once the American fleet was smashed, it couldn't be replaced in under a year. And a year was more than enough for Japan to take all Southeast Asia. By then, America would think twice before tackling such a vast area. That was the plan. In October 1941, the Americans in Washington ordered the Japanese to withdraw from the mainland of Asia. To show they meant what they said, the Americans stopped shipping oil to Japan. In Japan, the Navy wanted war to begin at once. Oil reserves would go down the longer war was delayed. There seemed nothing else but to gamble on a surprise attack. The Japanese strike force approached Pearl Harbor undetected at dawn on Sunday, December the 7th, 1941. The Americans were half expecting an attack on the Philippines, so the base at Pearl Harbor was caught completely by surprise. The attack actually caused less damage than it seemed. Most of the oil tanks, the dry docks and the repair shops were unharmed. As luck would have it, the American carrier force was at sea on maneuvers. Had America lost her aircraft carriers, Japan's great gamble might just have come off. I ask that the Congress declare that since the unprovoked and dastardly attack by Japan on Sunday, December 7th, 1941, a state of war has existed between the United States and the Japanese Empire. On the 15th of February, 1942, Singapore was captured by the Japanese. Perhaps the greatest single disaster ever to befall the British Empire. The Japanese commander, Yashimoto, took the surrender of over 130,000 British and Commonwealth troops, many just arrived in Singapore. The fall of Singapore was a great blow to Western prestige. In early 1942, Japan took country after country, island after island. Every people it subjugated hated the Japanese army. But the power of the West in Southeast Asia was broken. By summer 1942, the Japanese were in Burma, not far from the border with India. No matter how long it may take us, 
to overcome this premeditated invasion, the American people in their righteous might will win through to absolute victory. The Japanese began to realize they'd roused a sleeping giant. In June 1942, the Japanese Imperial Fleet headed for the American naval base at Midway Island. But the American fleet was waiting. In the Battle of Midway, the Americans shot down 300 Japanese aircraft. Four Japanese aircraft carriers went to the bottom. News of this defeat upset the confidence of the Japanese command. The public at home were never told. For the United States, Midway was a triumph. Now they went on the offensive. General Douglas MacArthur, US commander in the Pacific, planned the strategy. At Pearl Harbor, he explained his plans to President Roosevelt. One force, under Admiral Nimitz, would strike through the Central Pacific. The other, commanded by himself, would drive through the Southwest Pacific. His aim was to capture secure bases from where he could invade Japan itself. In a series of assaults, leapfrogging from island to island, American forces pushed back the Japanese. Wherever the Allied forces advanced, the Japanese fought back strongly. They were forced back, but they were ready to die to the last man. Losses on both sides were tremendous. By October 1944, United States forces were back in the Philippines. In Burma, too, the Japanese were giving way to the British, American and Commonwealth troops. 200,000 Japanese soldiers died. Short of supplies and ammunition, they began to retreat. Saipan was within range of Tokyo, Japan's capital. At first, the Americans bombed the aircraft factories. But in March 1945, they began to rain firebombs on whole areas of Japan's wooden cities. Bombing crippled the Japanese war effort. Japanese women became miners. Japanese children made munitions but supplies were running low. The Japanese realized what their leaders dared not admit, defeat was on the way. 
grimly they got ready to defend their homes. Even the crazy sacrifice of the kamikaze suicide pilots was in vain. On April the 1st, 1945, the Americans invaded Okinawa. But America too had heavy losses. The Americans feared an invasion of Japan might cost too much. In July 1945, at the Potsdam Conference, the Allied leaders issued a declaration to Japan. Either she must surrender or face prompt and utter destruction. The Japanese took no notice of the Potsdam Declaration, so President Truman authorized the use of the atomic bomb. Early on the 6th of August, 1945, an American bomber, the Enola Gay, took off. Destination Hiroshima, South Japan. In the bomb bay, one bomb. The American crew called it Little Boy. It had gigantic explosive power. As soon as the bomb went off, the whole inside of the airplane just lit up as if someone had set off a flashbulb. And then we had to wait, and this was our big worry, is what would the blast do when the blast got to the airplane? Finally, the blast did arrive. It was like being in an ash can and getting someone kicking. And then we uh, crowded to the window and uh, saw uh, just the whole city completely covered in smoke with this very tall mushroom cloud rising from it, which now everyone associates with, with a nuclear weapon. But it was the first time we'd ever seen anything like that. This one bomb killed, or injured, or turned into ashes, 200,000 people. But it was not so much the horror of Hiroshima that forced the Japanese government to surrender, but the news that Russia, by agreement with President Truman, had invaded Manchuria and Korea. When two days later the Americans dropped a second bomb on Nagasaki, the Emperor ordered surrender. He broadcast to his people. More than 500 officers of the army and navy committed ritual suicide. The Japanese surrender took place on board USS Missouri on September the 2nd, 1945. These proceedings are closed. Since 1945, Japan has become a firm ally of the United States. The hard-working Japanese enjoy the highest standard of living in Asia. Their products are known for quality throughout the world. Since the war, new generations of Japanese face new problems. To most of them, the old struggle for a Japanese empire is no more than a faded dream. <laughs> 